Fuck yes! Okay, so hopefully this video, uh, it actually picks up from this microphone and not my laptop. Um, so in this video, I wanted to talk about kind of like the darker side of, you know, new age metaphysics. Everything that's wrong and kind of comes, the, the, the things that come with, you know, um, falling into the pseudoscience category and pseudopsychology. And I know a lot of other occultists uh, don't like it when you put it that way, but I'm sorry, but it just falls into that branch for now. It just does. It's it's not science, and if you say it is, you are misrepresenting science, and if it's psychology, you're misrepresenting psychology, because if we knew what it was, trust me, like, we would know. We wouldn't be <laughs> searching like we do. There wouldn't be scientists actually dedicated to looking into these things, and so we're going to be going over a lot, so let's just start with the first thing. Now, a lot of people who are in the New Age Law of Attraction or, or Occultism. I'm mainly going to be talking about metaphysics, but there's a few things uh, that falls in line with what the Law of Attractioners are doing nowadays, and so I'll mention that when it comes. But mainly for those who are in metaphysics, a lot of them despise science. And I know, I know, I want to mention before speaking more in this video that I know that all people who believe in metaphysics are not like this, just as what I'm saying doesn't apply to everything, you see. There's going to be different opinions about this, and that's okay. But I'm not talking on behalf of all occultists, and I'm not talking about all occultists. But the fact that these people despise science, yet they're waiting on science to prove it. They're the same people that will, as soon as there's something that uh, correlates, they will be like, oh, see, here it is. And we're going to get into that later. You know, I see people online who comment on videos that somehow scientifically prove magic, uh, things of that nature. And they're like, they comment, I want to look at everyone and say, told you so, told you so. That's the ego wanting to say, told you so. You shouldn't be wanting to say, told you so. You should be wanting to learn, you know. It's like dating. It's when you find out, oh, this isn't the one for me. And they say you're getting closer to the next. Now, there's no actual measurement for what the next will be. But you at least know that, you know, you're getting onto something else. It could be good. It could be bad. But the fact that these people will despise science, they won't, they won't look at the things that disprove it, and they'll look at the things that seem to prove it or correlate, and this is called confirmation bias. Uh, it's where you look for things that specifically prove what you're trying to say. Um, I know an individual who posts videos online all the time about this serious galaxy star system that has aliens, and he's like, uh, see, I told you all I'm an alien. Apparently he's been telling people, he never told me he was an alien. Uh, he's mentioned other things, but apparently he's told people that he's an alien. And so he posted online, and he posted this scientific article that proves that 3 million people on this planet are actually Syrian aliens or something like that. And so he said, see, told you so, told you I was an alien. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if you get fired for your job for not being a legal American citizen or, I mean, a legal citizen of this planet. But... That's besides the point. You see, I know that not all people in the metaphysical community go over to that far branch. I know there are some that lay more to skepticism, as that is where I am moving closer to. Now, there are good and bad things to skepticism, and it seems that the New Age people always point out the bad but not the good part of skepticism. We all hold a, some <laughs> level of skepticism, some level of discernment. And what it comes down to is confirmation bias and just wanting to believe what is true that makes you feel good. You, you, want it, you want it to be real, and so you will pick apart until it becomes real. And a lot of cultists will talk shit about religion, how they do cherry picking. But <laughs> everybody does this. Everybody does this, but nobody wants to admit that they do it. And that's, that's the problem. That's the problem that I'm, I'm at. I'm reflecting on all the things that came with the good and with the bad, not just trying to figure out the good and trying to prove my case and say I told you so to everybody. Now, something that happens when you start talking about scientific evidence, um, you're then starting to misrepresent scientific evidence. See, I could say, you know, magic is kind of, you know, we can explain it in different things like intention setting and goal setting and how these things can motivate us, but that doesn't mean that the magic caused it. Does that make sense? Everybody thinks they're a scientist in magic. They're like, I'm testing these things. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm figuring out um, what things manifested from what I want. But you're taking in the, the variable that you're the only influence, and there's so many other influences. It's not a controlled experiment. 
<laughs> it's not scientific. And when you say it is, you're misrepresenting science. And I'm sorry to tell you that. And you may not like it. But see, when it comes to things of philosophical, metaphysical nature, you know, that's what I'm into. Um, I'm, I'm not against it. Um, I'm just a little bit more here, I'd say, grounded by your words. You know, a lot of the people that say they're grounded are usually talking about, you know, <laughs> being aliens and how they, you know, you know, try going telling your mother that you're an alien. She's going to look at you like a fucking fool. But when it comes to philosophy, religion, metaphysics, these things that are in the pseudoscience category. And I know it's such a derogatory term and that's why a lot of people don't like it. It does have this negative connotation. I think in Greek, pseudo means false. So you're basically just saying you're wrong. You see, it's not necessarily that you're wrong completely, but there's a few things that you're wrong about that you use to bring yourself to certain conclusions. And so we need to get better at filing in our premises to actually back up a conclusion because a lot of people are bad about this. And with all these different views, you know, it all, it all boils down to interpretation of sacred texts or contemplation. That, that's basically all it is. There's no measurement of divinity that we're using. There's no, there's no tool for that. And even people in the community admit that. But they admit it like it's like, well, you can't prove it wrong. That doesn't make you right at all. It makes you more likely to be incorrect. It's like saying that an alien abducted me last night. Could you imagine the hard work going in to disprove it? You see, in science you create a falsifiable statement. It only takes one thing to falsify it. Now, that doesn't mean that it's wrong. See, that's the thing, that people in the occult, metaphysical community, uh, some of the philosophical communities, because a lot of people are in those, and they're like, yeah, I'm for psychology. I know all about psychology. But they tend to not know the psychology that goes against their own uh, beliefs. And so, no, you're not. It's confirmation bias, and you're misrepresenting sci science, psychology, all of it. See, with all these contemplations of different metaphysical ideas, some of them actually contradict each other. Let's say one guy says, when you die, you come back here. Another guy says, when you die, you go to planet Xenon. He was right. They can't all be right, but they can all be wrong. And I want you to think about that. You see, as I've said, when you take upon a certain mindset, a certain belief, um, something that's not backed up by really sound evidence, you know, you can believe that, you know, if you put on a shirt, certain shirt, you have better days at work, and that's fine, you know. Um, but you have to realize that every little belief comes with something, something that you're not aware of, something that will control the way you do things. You see, so really, you're just altering the way you do things. So in reality, are these things altering the way that we do things to and then get a manifestation to come about or a certain desire that we want to come about? And if we put it in those terms, a lot of people want to say, there, 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 that proves magic. That proves, uh, uh, you know, enlightenment, wh whatever you want to put on it. But it doesn't. I want, I want you to know that correlation is not causation. Let me give an example of this. Um, you know, let's go, with, let's go with something that can't be seen. Let's go with wind. You know, I can take you out and we can go look at wind. Oh, before I mention that, I don't remember who quoted it, but they said that any unknown technology will always look like magic. You can take a cell phone back 2,000 years ago, they're going to think it's magic. And so a lot of occultists nowadays are saying, well, it's just not understood. And they act like it's helping their case. We need to be looking for it. We need to be thinking logically. And we're going to be going over these things throughout the video of how we can get closer to an answer without being a fucking buffoon. You see, there's a synchronicity that I came across the other day. I actually want to read off. Hold on. So I found this newspaper and there's something that I read on it that I want you all to take to heart. It makes no difference what you call God. You may call him Jehovah, Allah, Brahma, Vishnu, reality, infinite intelligence, the healing presence, the oversoul, the divine mind, the architect of the universe, the supreme being, the life principle, the living spirit of the creative power. The point is your belief or conviction about God governs and gives direction to your whole life. People want to pick up ideas that make them feel good, um, things that um, they think they have preconceived. So they're like, oh, this falls in line with what I'm thinking. And nobody ever wants to look at what they're getting when they take upon this belief and how it's going to guide their life. You see, if you take upon a belief that states that certain types of people for their own humane reasons are bad, and you look at them as bad and they're not even bad, when technically when your belief system will say that somebody is good and they're really a rapist, 
what do you do with that? That is a, that is that is completely incongruent, and that will harm you. And that's what you see a lot of today with Christians hating homosexuals, thinking that they they have all this sin and bad in them. It, it keeps you at this separation with them. I'm sorry, but you know the love that Christ tells you to have for them. None of these Christians have. They love to say that they do, but they don't. As long as you have this idea that there's this inherently bad thing in them, you cannot act and treat them fully with compared to somebody who's not looking at them like that, looking at them as a human being, how they've acted. You see, we base it on our history with people. You know, if you have a friend that constantly screws you off, you know, you treat him exactly how you see him. Like, if I'm not going to hit up somebody that keeps blowing me off or will only use me for money and things like that. It's just not going to happen. But to not like somebody because of their sexuality or what they believe, things that aren't even proven, and people will hate other people because of it. And these are so many flaws that come with it. And occultists too. See, a lot of people get egos. They get this, I've met God. Um, you know, occultists talk shit about Christians like, oh, they've never talked to God. They don't even know. But I do. That's the ego talking. And you see, there's people online that I've talked to who've said that they're the reincarnation of Aleister Crowley. The reincarnation of Amun-Ra, the sun god. They, <laughs> there's some people... There's a guy on Instagram who was talking to me about how he forged Thor's hammer. He was posting dick pics on there. And he was going on about how he's God and in the flesh and this and that. And I was lucky to see his tip. You see, I'm, I want to do a video where I go over all kinds of insane people I've been dealing, on, <laughs> dealing with online recently. I might do that next video or the next one. But this whole ego that comes with magic. See, a lot of people will meditate and they'll listen to these thoughts in the back of their head thinking that something divine is telling them this. It, it can't be wrong. There's no discernment. There's no criticism. And so they just take it. And some people will be like, wow, I'm not a human. I'm a Syrian alien. And you see, this is bullshit. And it gives the metaphysical, the pseudoscience, the pseudo-psychology -psych area, a bad name. And I know there are some occultists out there that can agree with this. Everybody falls on a different point in the scale. So I want to try to go over everything because I don't want to take away from your belief. I don't want to change your mind whatsoever. But if there's some things that you notice and some things that you're like, wow, I should change something about this, um, I want you to be able to come to terms with it. And that's why I'm making this video. Nobody else is talking about these things. The only people that are talking similar in the area that I'm talking about are people that are hating on the occult and just calling it this evil thing you know metaphysical things new age is this evil thing people are even calling law of attraction an evil thing you know when you take upon law of attraction you're taking on a belief that actually governs your life like i read in the newspaper in specific ways we went over this on the darker side of self-development about how it's not this absolute thing like people think speaking of criticism it's another thing occultists can't take criticism and especially when it comes from science because then they're like oh no 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 the science blah 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 or they'll say oh well my science proves your science wrong even when it doesn't even prove it wrong um, and it, it comes from this, you know, a lot, a lot of cultists, like, again, earlier I said, in the back of their minds, correlation and causation are this same thing. And it's, a, it's something that comes with the belief whenever you take synchronicity into account, but there's ways to take that out of account while also believing in synchronicity. There are ways of reconciling this paradox. But either way, they can't take criticism. Um, you know, Coy Fresco, if any of you know him, um, there was another guy, I don't remember who it was, I'll try to put a link down below if I can find it, but he was disproving what Coy Fresco was saying about astral projection and lucid dreaming. You see, and he actually disproves it, and he actually has shit to back him up about what he's saying. Now, the guy isn't disproving lucid dreaming, he was just, you know, showing the facts that it was just that everything that Coy Fresco was saying about astral projection is the same description as lucid dreaming. And he was yet saying they were separate things. And a lot of people were like, but they are, but they are. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Search more into wake and do lucid dreaming. Um, this is your chance to hop on science for that confirmation bias. Um, the guy made the video and Koi Fresco comments and he's talking about like, oh, great video. But and then goes to talk kind of like about how he's wrong about certain things when no, no. He, he acted like he was being misinterpreted when no, he wasn't at all go watch both videos i'll try to leave a link below as i said but a lot of people can't take criticism um i i would love to find uh, you know critical people even people who are atheists to talk about um you know metaphysical things i want to get to a different level of figuring out what it is 
And if it's not what it is, what the fuck is it? See, people want to contemplate the same ideas that everyone's just been contemplating, contemplating. I want to talk to critical thinking people that can find the holes in um, my thinking. Um, this is what I do to myself because there's not many people out there doing it. There's just a bunch of people screaming at each other. The occultists can't take the criticism. The other side can't take the criticism. It seems like not many people want to get together and think. I know there are people out there, and I hope this video finds some of you. But if you're just a regular occultist, new ager, and you would like to start contributing... I would like you to start looking into syllogism and start creating syllogisms that make the occult and magic make more sense on a logical level. Um, let me give an example. This is a very bad example, and <laughs> it could definitely be proven wrong. Um, this is kind of like a correlation causation thing, but let me give you an example. So you got two premises, and they have to back up your conclusion. Um, you'll learn this. You know, they they have to be correct. If they, if they're false, if I say, well. I'm a woman and I have hair, therefore women have hair, but I'm not a woman and not all women have hair. And so you need to look at what your premises are and are they backing up the conclusion? You know, you could say uh, the placebo effect um, can create motivation, at, you know, this way. Magic creates motivation that same way. And so a lot of people want to make the conclusion, therefore magic's real, <laughs> you know. Um, you get closer to saying that it's you know, there's a correlation. Um, there's definitely a correlation, but people want to automatically hop on causation. And also, some people don't even think that magic is causing change to occur. Jason Miller, his idea is that magic is just yet another one of many influences that we can have. Absolutely. Hypnosis is an influence that can actually get people to quit smoking. And so that's almost stepping closer to the logical side. It does not make it there all the way, but it is a step closer and a step farther away from Syrian aliens. But look into syllogism, look into formal logic, look into epistemology, and then start thinking about why you believe the things that you do. We weren't born with these ideas, I'm sorry. Some people say they are. Some people say, oh, I'm reincarnated and I have the ideas from the start. <sighs> Shut up. Um, you know. Reflect on your beliefs. Look at what you're getting from them. Uh, look into how you know what you know. And I know a lot of people f will end up falling on the, well, I do it because it works. And we're going to go over this. But I want to move on because the video is already at 20 minutes. Okay, so my camera died. I'm pretty sure I got out everything I wanted to say. I was talking about us not being born with these beliefs. Um, and you need to realize this. And something that I had to realize, too, that, you know, I wasn't born with these ideas, no matter how much I may have fooled myself into believing that. Now, I want to mention two things that I think I've forgotten to mention. Um, number one, I was going to talk about wind at some point. I think I got trailed off on a correlation versus causation uh, type of talk. Um, let's say, you know, I took you out. Yeah, yeah, we got into the technology is basically magic um, talk. But you go outside and you have somebody who is like, you know, God is pushing me, you know, they feel the wind, so God is pushing, you know, it may be true that you feel the wind, there is that effect there, but you saying what is causing it can be completely wrong, and so when a lot of people are like, I do magic because it works, but yet they want to say, yeah, it was the magic that worked, and we don't know, and this is why we need to search, and we need to quit acting like we know what the fuck we're talking about when we don't, but either way, study into syllogism, formal logic, epistemology, and then kind of fit your beliefs in there and see what you get. Also, while my phone died, I was mentioning earlier about someone being like, haha, told you so, told you so in a comment, but it was like a couple weeks ago and I don't remember where I commented on. Well, somebody just commented on synchronistically. And so I wanted to read this off. It was uh, on a glitch bottle video of Solomonic magic and quantum science. Um, again, uh, people wanting to, you know, qu quantum science, <laughs> quantum science points to a lot of strange things. Again, it's the correlation to that magic, and they, they want to say it's causation. You know, looking at, you know, changing a particle with consciousness um, does not mean that you can think of a Lambo and vibrate it into your garage. I'm sorry, and I know that's an extreme example, but, you know, what I would like to see, you know, what would, what would further then point that your consciousness affects things would be to uh, force the particle to not act like it should or to act like what we thought it should have acted like or to change it blue or to do something else completely to it. And there are tons of other scientific experiments that don't dive into the double slit experiment because um, I don't think it's a very good one to fall on. And a lot of people do. And uh, it's easily maneuverable. But either way, on his video, somebody commented, I am so happy science is starting to validate our occult practices. I just want to scream, na 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 na, told you so. 
And of course, Glitch Bottle was like, oh yeah, of course, you know. Screw those limited people who only take in the things that have been proven true. You know, are you skeptical when a salesman comes into your house and tries to sell you something at all? Are you just like, huh, screw those critics, huh, screw those bad reviews, you know, screw the Alex Mayer sucks video, I'm still gonna buy into this scam. I'm not saying that magic is a scam, but I hate when there, he goes on to say that there's scientific evidence, but then he talks shit about science in that comment. This is what I'm talking about. Um, you know, and I said, don't desire to be right, desire to know. Desire to know. Don't desire to point out and be right. Um, that's the ego. The one thing you try, you, you think due to your spirituality, you're putting to rest, you are waking that dragon up. You are letting that dragon consume you, my friend. Another thing that people do is a lot of people will say, oh, well, you can't prove it's wrong. I recently just saw a video by uh, the power of the occult, and he was basically uh, sort of coming from that position. And that really doesn't say anything. It just says, you know, we need to search for something that either proves it or that completely deproves it. Um, to say that it's non-falsifiable, therefore, you, you know, it, again, again, logical fallacies. We need to keep them in check. Um, and a lot of the people that hold this also say, I don't need to prove this to you. Um, this is something that Frater Xavier says, and it's something that I fell in line with for a while. It's like, well, you know, I don't need to prove this to you. You do it, which is bogus. Um, it's like when a Christian tells you, well, I, you know, you can't understand the Bible until you have the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, you can't understand magic until you do it. And, you know, certainly that's the way with some things. You know, they bring up the, you got, you got to flex the muscle type of uh, argument, um, which I can argue that around. We can do that in another video. But this, I don't need to prove it to you, is basically telling somebody to act on faith. And all these occultists will talk about Christians who act on faith, yet they're acting on faith and telling the other person to. Um, you know, it's true. You don't need to prove anything. But for you, Frater Xavier, since you're selling a product based on the premise that this will do this and of course there's some cases where it won't work and you know you've created a loophole for those as well but you know if, if you're going to be that authority you need to be able to back that up again look into logical fallacies you'll learn this whenever you study more about the burden of proof Another people, they hold the higher ground. They're like, I'm an initiate. Uh, again, the God told me or I was reincarnated. I'm right. You're wrong. Um, you know, how, how can you argue with it? It's like when a Christian says that an occultist is possessed by a demon, you know, um, but then they go and do the same argument to other people. You see, you could say that I don't understand because, you know, I've had people talk to me and they're like, oh, you don't understand this practice when it was at a time that I was actually doing that practice. And then they were like, oh, wait, you're right. Oh, now I see what you're saying. They read the text as if I was coming against them, but I was just trying to set them straight just a little bit. You see, you could say that I'm wrong, but I could just turn around and say that Thor told me that you're wrong. <laughs> a big problem with magic, um, you know, th there's some there's some good things. There's some good things to everything, some bad things to a lot of things. You know, there's, there's the good, there's the up and the down. Um, but I want a lot of people to notice some of the things that can come with this metaphysical uh, beliefs. Um, it attracts a lot of people, and a, and a lot of magic, I've noticed, is based on the lack of control, a feeling of a lack of control in one's life um, to result to supernatural, uh, unproven means to bring about a result. You see, you need to be working here on Earth to create an opportunity for you to be able to do something. Um, th again, Jason Miller, uh, I really do like his work. I'm, I'm not going to lie. And even though I'm moving tor more towards criticism, um, you know, he talks about making your life enchantable. You know, don't do a money spell if you don't have a job and you're living off the government. Um, but then again, if you did the if you did the money spell and something worked, there's no proof leading that it was the magic exactly. And a lot of people say that it does. And when you say that, you just prove how much you don't think about the things that you believe and the things that you claim to know. Many people talk about higher consciousness when we're still studying regular mundane consciousness and I know a lot of people will be like well everything's higher consciousness but then other people say no there's a difference there's a high and a low it's like fear and then love but those are those are emotions and so they're just adding again correlation correlation and now, and now you know the good part about it you know a lot of people say oh it's like self-development I'm working on myself in these various ways well again we went over the dark side of self-development it's not an absolute thing just because you're working on yourself doesn't mean you're developing anything see it's the self developing the self think about that. 
And I know you'd be like, oh, well, nature, nature does its thing on its own. Nature, no, 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 no. Many, many, many things, many things come into account. It's, it's not just, it's not just like this working thing. There's a lot of nature that fights over territory. There's a lot of nature that dies. There's a lot of nature that mutates. You know, uh, bacteria, things in life. There's uh, saying that uh, self-development and like working on the self is like this absolute thing and comparing it to plant growth, I think is bullshit. There's a lot of people that also say, oh, magic's not for everybody, but then they also say that it is. Now, here's something that comes bad with the law of attraction, and in magic most of the time. You take into account that you're bringing upon yourself all your manifestations, and so you look at people that are having bad things, and you assume, oh, well, they're causing this to happen, this and that, when, ma when we have tons of different influences on us. Again, another something you should study, determinism. And I know a lot of people are like, no, there's free will. But then I could look at you and say, then how the hell would astrology work? Astrology would work way better in a term in a deterministic uh, perspective, actually. But a lot of people, they, they have this idea like, oh, there's no reason you shouldn't be doing good when I've I've told you how to do magic. But then at the same time, say it's not for everybody. So what do you have to got? Or what, what, what do you got for those who it's not for, but they still want your help because they like your perspective. And a lot of times they'll be a dick to them. And it really sucks. And it gives this community a bad rap completely. Another thing, um, speaking on behalf that it's not for everybody, um, look into meditation induced psychosis. Um, this is a serious thing. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, they were crazy before and this and that. But it's like, if you were so into psychology and know so much about the workings of the human mind, how did you not know that you weren't ready for it? And why didn't you at least check up on it if you're so into psychology? See, it's the confirmation bias. You're only into the psychology that you want to believe in, that you want to know. And then when something comes around that disproves you, you push it away. And again, misrepresenting psychology. Now, what about you, Hayden? You say you do magic. Well... I'm going to be honest. Actually, oh no, the camera's dying. I'm going to be honest. Um, there's been times I use magic for everything. Sometimes I completely quit and I didn't. And uh, I track the different results that I got. A lot of people will pick apart the things that they want to see in the results and uh, not what they don't want to see. This is the importance of the journal that I said. You write down the good and the bad, everything. Uh, you know, it's reflection. And so I'm going to be honest. At the point that I'm at now, I consider magic as gas in the tank. Um, you could say that the, ga the gas helps you get to the destination, but it's not just the gas. It's the car. It's you driving the car. It's the roads that have been paved, the people that were paid to work, the money that was paid to the people that had to pay the people to. C There's millions of variables for everything in life. This is why synchronicity is one of those, like, iffy marks. But in all reality, in my life, 95% mundane and 5% magic. Um, it's really good to keep yourself out of reading too many mystical texts and, you know, uh, coding on that mindset that might for some people who could get psychosis and believe that they're Syrian aliens, you know, this is why they say to be careful. But at the point that I'm not at now, I do it for 5% of things. Um, specific things, um, mainly I, I, I use it to test different things. However, I can't control the experiment as much as I'd like to. I'd like to start uh, more experiments, but I, I don't want to be working with just the New Age community. I'd want to be dealing with people uh, such as atheists who completely uh, are against it or don't believe in it. I know there's not, not everybody's against it, but there are some people that completely are against it. Um, you know, I'm not at the point that I want to prove anything. I want to know... <laughs> This is why science looks at everything known and measurable, you know. Be happy for science. People have to despise, oh, oh, those limited people. Well, those limited people made your cell phone and the camera that you use and the microphone that you use to upload your video and make your stupid fucking comment. Now, the reason that I do 5% magic, 95% mundane is because that's where I get the best results. But I can't say that I do it because it works. I can't say, oh, the magic worked. We don't even know what magic is. We can't, we can't know that something caused something when we don't even know what the something is. You know, we realize that the wind pushes you and it's not a god blowing you over because we realize different things uh, and everything, even in weather, in nature. This is the point of science. But at the end of the day, what do I think magic is? I definitely don't think it's a cause. Um, I would I would say I'd, fa I'd fall more in line to uh, search from... The beginning standpoint of Jason Miller is that magic is an influence upon yourself to cause an event, you know. It's a way, better way of seeing it, but we're not there yet. See, uh, is it a cause? No. But it is possible that it's an influence. And I know a lot of people in the magical community 
Look at other people like they're idiots, that lower nature, like, oh, you're just a pig, you know, strong meat for men and the milk for babes. They hold that. And that's, you know, that doesn't help you look at people for who they are. Uh, it's like when a Christian looks down on somebody for being full of sin when there is none. So if you're an occultist, if you're a skeptic, if you kind of vibe with what I was saying, uh, let me know. Let me know what you think. Uh, challenge my ideas. Um, if I was wrong about anything, let me know. Um, and if you'd like to become a super normie today, just do 5% magic and 95% mundane, hard work, critical thinking. And that's basically it. And I kind of have to say that I do magic kind of because, you know, it's kind of like a hobby for me. Rather than suspend my belief in a movie, I spend it in, in ritual, so to speak. Okay, so my camera died, and at this point, I've got to get on the road. But basically, all that I really wanted to say was that if we're going to be moving anything anywhere, we need to be critical, and that means admiring and acknowledging the things that we're wrong about. It gets us closer to learning what's real. Let's think, and let's stop saying that correlation is causation when it's not. And so if you enjoyed this video and liked this video, uh, please share it with your local firemen. And uh, make sure you subscribe, and if you want every video notification, hit the bell. Uh, I don't post daily, so don't worry. Uh, you only get one video every Sunday. To be honest, don't even worry about clicking the notification bell, because all you have to remember is that there's going to be a video next Sunday. I can't wait to see you then. I will for you all to prosper, and have a great day.